you're looking at his chest. This is exactly what his chest looks like. Now, if a heart's doing this, anything could be wrong with it. There could be a problem in the aorta, there could be a problem in the ventricle, there could be a hole in the septum, you just don't know. What part of the heart is enlarged? What's it doing? There's only so much that you can do, kind of with a stethoscope and with palpation. Gusevino was brought to our attention by his father, who said he had some kind of heart problem, and he, he looked a little skinny and a little frail for his age, and as soon as we took off his shirt, you could see the heave totally through his skin. The remote mountain community of La Sabana, which is several hours above Pueblo Nuevo on the mainland, the challenge became, how do you get this kid from way up in the mountains to a pediatric cardiologist, and potentially to a pediatric cardiac surgeon to you know, kind of correct this problem? We've arrived in Pueblo Nuevo, uh, the jumping off point for our mobile clinic to La Sabana in the mountains. And it's actually been really dry for three or four days. This actually might be uh, one of the easier passages up the mountain that we've had. Let's see. When we arrived in La Sabana, we found that a few days previously, Gustavino's heart had actually decompensated. He'd gotten very, very ill very short of breath and you know, was fainting. I knew immediately kind of how frightening it was going to be for Gustavino to make that journey. And especially once I'd heard that he'd made it alone and that his parents were only able to follow about five days later, that's when I was like, man, I'm going to David. We're here at the Women's and Children's Hospital in David. Gustavino has been here seven days. Um, apparently what they're really trying to do is just stabilize him to see if he could be a candidate to make it uh, to Panama City and have surgery. We looked in on Gustavino. He's profoundly anemic. His hemoglobin is very, very low. This may be nutritional. This may also be due to the fact that he also has tuberculosis. Um, and he has this some kind of restrictive defect giving him his shortness of breath. When I first had the chance just to put our sinusite edge on his chest and take a look, as soon as you put that probe on there, suddenly you're no longer looking at just this heave under the skin. You're now actually looking at the heart. We were able to see in extraordinary detail the dilation of his atria. We were able to look at his valves. It was very interesting to see a pediatric cardiologist using the edge because of the specific information that she was able to glean by being able to really see all the structures, to kind of walk through all the different parts of the heart. Over here, that shouldn't go be there. Oh, but now I see a something in that bowl. Okay. And we're going to be coordinating with Dr. Rakina to essentially do his six months of tuberculosis medical treatment because we're essentially committing to 24 weeks to 24 turnaround trips up that mountain and since you can save material on the edge both film clips and still images it's just an extraordinary tool for bringing somebody who lives in a remote mountain community in contact with a specialist pediatric cardiologist who's on the other side of the continent in essentially direct contact is an extraordinary sidestepping of the mountain ranges, geography, socioeconomics, and all the other barriers that exist between that doctor and this patient. 